Salutations and bienvenue, my name is Collector X. Everybody seems to be excited about Civil War, which makes me wonder, should this cinematic version of Civil War happen? Ok, before we go any further, I want to say that the majority of this was uh, written at an earlier point, and the movie is now completed and about to be shown. I'm not saying that the movie shouldn't happen, ok? That would be stupid, like someone's going to be like, hey, the movie's completed and got almost 100% on Rotten Tomato, but this guy has some interesting points, so shut it down, shut it all down. The majority of this will be, well, those are spoilers, so you will have to wait and see. So let's start. What is the Civil War comic event? No, not that one, wrong again, the first one, the original from 2006. There we go. For those of you who don't know, this Civil War is the event that split the Marvel superhero community into two different sides, with Captain America and Iron Man as the leaders. Iron Man is the leader in Civil War 2. I wonder if he'll win this one too. Ok, back on track now. The source of the split was the Superhuman Registration Act, which pretty much said that you need a license to save people. I don't have time to fully talk about the act now, but there are some discrepancies from comic to comic, mostly regarding the part about revealing your identity to the public. Captain America is against it because of experience and World War II, lesson more. Some of you might say, how can they do this without the X-Men? Because they have been the first heroes to deal with this crap with the Mutant Registration Act. By the way, Cap was retired during this event. Quite simple, Civil War takes place following the events of House of M and Decimation. The mutants are almost extinct now. In both cases, the Scarlet Beach, oh, I mean witch, used her chaos magic and reformed reality. In the House of M reality, the mutants won the war with humanity and are now in charge, while the humans are almost extinct. Also, out of all the different timelines, the House of M future is the most peaceful, not including the one from Secret Wars 2015. And when she turned reality back to normal, she eliminated the mutants thus ruining one of my favorite books. Dear God, it got dark and gritty, and if you are still wondering why did the remaining X-Men stay neutral, well, Emma Frost beast lab Miss Marvel so hard that I'm surprised there weren't any scars left. So, the X-Men being neutral during this conflict is kinda ironic, it's like they've seen the future. Well, at least one team was against it. They could have done the decimation event now, since they have their little pissing contest with Fox, but they just brought the mutants back from extinction with Avengers vs X-Men. Now moving on to bigger problems. Who is this going to affect? In the comic universe this could have affected hundreds and hundreds of people, but in the cinematic universe I can count all of the earthbound super powered heroes by using my two hands. They could inflate the numbers by using the inhumans, but the whole subject of the movie shifts towards oppression and minority discrimination based on race. The comic version stayed clear out of that mess, as mentioned earlier. If the theme of the movie will be protecting people's privacy and freedom, well, that's a bust since Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. introduced the Index. The Index is the involuntary version of the Superhuman Registration Act. They actually detain and block the powers of the users and the users themselves. The Index could provide more powered people to the table, but most of them are tech based and created in the lab or lab accident, and very few are born with their powers. Plus, we don't know these people, and the event was all about hero versus hero action. Well known heroes, might I add. I think that the starting point for Civil War will happen in Captain America 3, where Cap finds out about the Index. This will be pretty interesting to see. Also, there is the whole Terrigen outbreak in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and the divide that started in Avengers Age of Ultron continues. Cap is against it, while Tony thinks it's great and should be implemented at a larger scale. And let's not forget the whole debacle started when the action of a team of teenage superheroes 
superhero led to the destruction of a town. That's not all. The whole thing was caught on live camera as part of their reality TV show. The team that did this was the New Warriors, which I have considered the Marvel equivalent to the Teen Titans. Technically, I think it wasn't the hero's fault since Nitro was in town. Jesus, that guy is like a walking bomb. Anything could have set him off. But yes, they were under trend for these situations. This got the civilians on board with the legislation, or rather their protest, created this law. It's kinda hard to tell, but that's politics for you. People are pissed. Quick, let's do something. And speaking of politics, the event from the MCU that caused the creation of a similar act are the invasion of New York, the helicarriers falling, and Ultron. Need I add that two of these are government fuck-ups? S.H.I.E.L.D. caused the invasion by messing with the Tesseract. By the way, jerks, you wanted to nuke the city. And the second thing, S.H.I.E.L.D. was corrupted by Hydra and they were planning to kill people. Dumbass. So yeah, let's add bureaucracy to the people that saved the world twice. The only thing that the heroes from the MCU are sort of guilty are the events from Age of Ultron, again by messing with an infinity stone. But in the MCU people love the Avengers and yes there are some douchebags that don't but the majority of the people love them. Sure they could use the Hulk fiasco from Age of Ultron but that could be fixed and plus nobody died in that. Heck Iron Man tried to limit the casualties by trying to get the Hulk out of the city. And now for something fun. Whose side was I on? When I first read the event, I was in Captain America's side, but now that I'm older and wiser, I think that they both were wrong. When presented with two extremes, the best answer is probably something in the middle. For instance, in Mass Effect you have the option to save the Ged or the Quarians. Nope, I save them both. Captain America is wrong because he's trying to keep the status quo. That was a disaster that didn't need to happen. Again, the kids need training. Heck, even you train the Avengers in the military tactics when you join them. Iron Man is wrong because he tries to protect the normal people, <coughs> like him. If the heroes reveal their real identities, their families become targets for the villain. And most of them don't have billions of dollars and several private security forces under their command. His idea isn't that bad on paper but it needs to be tested. Also, Iron Man might also be feeling guilty for a past event where, where his mind was hacked and his Argonaut armors went on a rampage. He arrived to the conclusion that they need to be regulated, but ironically that wouldn't have stopped the hacker from doing that to him. Another thing that will be missed in the movie version is the Cap Iron Man dynamic. For instance, Captain America's identity was known by the public in the comics, but Iron Man's identity was still a mystery. This is the point when Iron Man unmasks in order to promote the act, which I find kinda ironic and awesome at the same time. And yes, the silly bodyguard cover story held up up to 2007. Actually, I think that he revealed his identity before this and tricked them again. Plus, we didn't get Cap and Iron Man getting along. In the Avengers, they didn't get along, but they came to an understanding by the end. In Avengers Age of Ultron, they got along from the start, but all of that was broken due to Vision. You see what I mean? We didn't get a team-up movie, with just the two of them fighting a common enemy like AIM or HYDRA. Something like a body cop movie with them would have been great, it would have created a bigger impact for this conflict. I mean it's not like two random guys who've never met before fighting. Looking at you, Batman vs Superman, they have a prior connection, but I don't think it's strong enough, or rather it's weak enough for this to happen. Wouldn't it have been better for Marvel to wait in order to introduce more characters and more 
teams in order to give this event a bigger stake but hey i've educated you guys regarding one of marvel's great and unique events despite the fact that i've seen the same conflict in kingdom come heck even the same type of characters were at odd what do you guys and girls think please let me know in the comments below thanks for listening this is collector x logging out